We're back. We're live. Four o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And this show today is going to be Life After Statehood. It's a study, a study in nostalgia for the old guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you, know, it's, you know, if we don't study history, we are doomed to repeat it. Uh, George Santiana. Santiana. That's right. That's right. And um, today we have, as usual, on Life uh, After Statehood, we have Ray Tsuchiyama, an informed citizen who, who has great memories. He's into <laughs> nostalgia, among other intellectual pursuits. I want to, before we start, I want to tell you that if you want to participate in the conversation, we have Twitter for you, Think Tech HI, and we have our uh, VoIP phone, which you can call on 415-871-2474 and participate in the discussion, okay? And today's discussion is about air transportation in Hawaii, especially since statehood. It's very interesting. Statehood, like, coincided with the Boeing 707, didn't it? Within weeks. That's absolutely correct. Uh, and before that, there was uh, air travel to Hawaii, the Clipper planes, the Pan Am Clipper planes, and they had to refuel uh, in Hawaii before going on to the Philippines, Japan, yeah. and so forth. And those are glory days of air travel because when it landed, it, it was on the water. And then you transferred to a little, uh, little boat or outrigger canoe, and then <laughs> all your luggage, but you were like, at point, you were at your hotel immediately. You didn't have a commute from <laughs> right the airport. Waikiki. That's right, <laughs> right, right there. It was like door to door, door to door uh, kind of thing. But you're absolutely right. The 707 uh, brought volume, could bring 200, 250 passengers one time. Now, that's equivalent to one small uh, liner, uh, uh, passenger liner coming in from uh, Bay, I mean, Los Angeles or San Francisco. Yeah. So this suddenly revolutionized uh, hotels in Waikiki because you had to have a middle range hotel to take care of a, a burst of people coming in and they leave in two weeks. And the uh, more traditional form of tourism was that you took a leisurely one month, two months hanging out in Waikiki. The ship. That's, that's the ship. What, that yeah. was the pace was slower. That's than right. Ship. In in the uh, Bing Crosby, uh, Bob Hope uh, era, Hedy Lamarr era. Music yeah. and the Banyan it, Court. And they had and the, the Beach, Boy, Hotel, uh, Beach Boys and so and forth. And Edwards yeah. and all that stuff. And, and Hawaii Calls, the yeah, radio yeah, uh, yeah, shows yeah. and so forth. But it was a, uh, like you say, a very slow motion kind of vacation that nobody takes anymore. And they had beautiful kinds of uh, restaurants, uh, hula shows, clubs. And, and suddenly you had a new kind of middle class visitor who had uh, money to spend just for a week or two weeks and they were taking the next plane uh, back to the, uh, it was very Los exciting Angeles. to take a jet plane. Up till then, it was the best you could do was a turboprop. That's right. Or, <laughs> or less, you know, just an ordinary propeller piston engine. But here now, these were jets, you know, and, and really, I mean, we haven't had such disruptive technology in no. air transportation since then. So when this happened, people were really excited about traveling halfway across the Pacific right. in a few hours, wow, in a brand new jet plane. Very exciting, and it was part of the experience of coming to Hawaii, wasn't That's it? That's right, and, and uh, you have another uh, iconic uh, movie, Blue Hawaii, that comes out right around that time, 61. And you see the uh, swaying uh, fields of uh, sugarcane, the pineapple fields, Elvis Presley. Uh, that was iconic, uh, right before the Vietnam War uh, also. And suddenly you have the Hawaiian hill, uh, uh, village uh, sprouting up by uh, Kaiser, yeah. Henry Kaiser. And that was the first tie-in with a, uh, a, a, a TV show called Hawaiian Eye. I remember it. And Hawaiian Eye and uh, uh, Hawaii, Hilton Hawaiian Village was a tie-up. Uh, of course, the show was filmed in Burbank. Bank, California, 99% <laughs> of the time. But people assumed that it was filmed in Hawaii. And again, they had a, they wanted to come and see where it was filmed. And so you had the, uh, the rise of TV. You had the rise of uh, 707. You had technology All really these accelerating. All happening at the and, same time. And, and statehood. And statehood and a new iconic hotel to cater to these short-term visitors called the Ilikai by Chin Ho, yeah. and that was, and the outrigger chain, enormous uh, growth in uh, middle, uh, you know, uh, market uh, accommodations, yeah. and that sprouted out all, all, these all over. All things happened, they're all connected, yes. as you say. Uh, right yeah. during the early 60s, from yeah. uh, like 59, 60, 61, 62, and plus, when you think about it, uh, the freeways uh, uh, began to uh, uh, emerge uh, right at that time. H1 too. was just being That's built right. around that time. And a huge construction all around uh, Liliha, Kapalama, all the way to Kaimuki. And so you had uh, a, just like we go to Beijing or Shanghai today and see the future being built uh, uh, before our eyes, that was Honolulu in the early 
early 60s. Cranes everywhere, That's construction right. going. And of course, they were draining what seemed to be a swamp right uh, uh, before entering Waikiki, and that was Alamona Shopping Center. <laughs> that would be the biggest uh, shopping center in the world uh, coming up. So, and of course, there was another construction project, uh, uh, and, and people, uh, tourists used to come and also watch, which is nearby called the State Capitol. That was a beautiful uh, building also that we should not ignore. And, and that was, and that was uh, with the volcano shapes, and it was the symbol of statehood and of the future of Hawaii. We had a vision of the future then, don't you think? Statehood was more than just statehood. You know, you had to get excited about it. Right. And there were exciting things happening. And one of them was this whole thing driven by the 707, later followed with other things. Um, on the other hand, I, I, there, was, there was another aspect to it I want to mention to you. So I, I get here in 1965. Right. Um, there was no, uh, you know, what do you call it, jetway. No, they didn't have jetways. Right. And they didn't have any security either, by the way. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> you could go on or off right, the right, plane. Right. Nobody would want right, to With chickens and firecrackers and everything. And, <laughs> yeah. and the Department of Agriculture wasn't so aggressive. And either. there was Aloha yeah. and Hawaiian in fierce competition. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you get off the plane from the mainland, and the first thing that happens is some young thing Okay, is there in a hula skirt, and she—I don't know—I think we must be close to the same age. Right. She, she's dancing for you. They're right. all right. all around dancing, right. and they come over and they give you a lay, and then maybe another one right. and another one, and, and all the passengers on the plane feel they're being right. welcomed in a very special way that did not exist anywhere right. else in the world. That was welcome to yeah. Hawaii, and then they would take you to a little grass shack affair on the tarmac, right. okay, in which there was unlimited pineapple juice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could drink yourself silly <laughs> with pineapple juice. What a welcome that was. And your, your eyes got bigger and bigger because all these people were, you know, were catering to you that way. Yeah, those were the days. And, and the pineapple uh, and Dole, of course, and uh, the major, um, you know, big five companies still in agriculture at that time. Uh, if you look at ads, uh, remember the story of Georgia O'Keeffe coming to Maui and Hawaii, painting a pineapple that would be on in, in a Saturday, uh, Saturday evening post of that, and Life magazine of that period. Uh, the pineapple juice uh, as a morning drink was what middle class America really looked forward to every morning. And that's what uh, you know, got them to uh, see Hawaii as the origin of a very exotic drink at that time. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and at the airport, you know, you get a taxi cab, and it was a Cadillac. You know, I mean, I come from New York. They didn't have Cadillac <laughs> taxi cabs. Even now, they never have Cadillac. They had checker cabs like right. Neil Abercrombie, right? <laughs> That's all they had. And, and anyway, you get in a Cadillac cab, and the driver is uh, kind of a beach boy kind of right. personality, and he would teach you and talk to you and tell you things, and it was like entertainment it right. was. And invariably, uh, Ray, I hope you remember this, <laughs> invariably you come down Nimitz, okay, and there's right. this big pineapple right. on the top uh, of the Dole plant, which right. was an active plant at right. the time. Right, exactly. All these people, you know, and students, you know. Which is a water tank, actually, but it was a be very beautiful uh, symbol of manufacturing at that point of uh, canned pineapple. Yeah, and, and invariably the taxi driver to the uninitiated, you know, Malahini tourist, mm -hmm. he would say, hmm, they're taking that pineapple down. Why? Because it's ripe. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a joke that led you into Waikiki. Millions yeah, of people yeah. heard that okay. silly joke. <laughs> and of course, on Hawaiian Eye, uh, one of the characters was Ponce Ponce, who was a taxi driver. Yeah. And he was Same a Filipino, personality, yeah. And he was a Filipino uh, comedian that rose into prominence because of that show. And again, <laughs> uh, that iconic kind of uh, happy-go-lucky guy who would initiate you to the uh, tropical culture, which was completely unlike urban LA or San Francisco or New York or Peoria, Illinois. It was, it was an introduction to something mysterious yet very happy and vacation land. I mean, you left your um, you know, a nine to five job behind on the mainland, entered a paradise and that was Hawaii, selling that kind of dream through uh, movies like Blue Hawaii and many sure, others. Which, I mean, people remember. You know, the thing is that it was so good that it, set, it cast a shadow that lasts even till now. I mean, it, ho it made Hawaii so popular, it, it sort of formalized the romance. Right. It, you know, it packaged the romance. Right. And so everybody was looking for that Webley Edwards, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, in, the, in the, the courtyard of the Banyan, uh, Ala Moana, right. Moana right. Hotel, right. Uh, uh, Hawaii Calls. Oh yeah, Hawaii Calls. Hawaii yes, Calls, yes, you yes. mentioned. Yeah, right. Okay, it formalized that romance. Right. Um, 
Elvis Presley did, but right. all these guys were like actors on the stage right. selling you that romance, right. and people were buying it. And so much so that they remembered it and they told their kids. I had a client who came here in the, what, I guess it was the late 50s, early 60s. He loved it so much that for every, and he lived in Australia. Every year thereafter, he came for the rest of his life. It left <laughs> such an impression on right. him. And he knew, we all knew, that the romance was right. petering out. Right. And it was you know, like running on an empty tank. Well, and, 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 but we have to also look outside of Hawaii, what was happening at that time. So people had money. There was a 707. Uh, the US was the most advanced country in the world for building planes. They were coming from uh, east to west, right? They didn't go west were to China or Japan because remember they were third world countries almost. They were, had still suffered from devastation. Uh, I mean, China was, was uh, communist. You couldn't go there. Uh, Korea was devastated by the war. Japan was devastated by the Philippines. All these places were just trying to get out of war during the early 60s. And even Singapore, remember, Singapore Airlines is not one of the top five in the world. Uh -huh. uh, they had nothing back in the 60s. And, and well, think about it, alternative futures. What if Hawaii, uh, Aloha Hawaiian, had emerged as a transnational Asian airline. People talked about uh, yeah, it, of that but time. they didn't do it. No, no. You know? In fact, you know, I mean, this whole concept of Hawaii being sort of the end of the universe, right? You know, you want to go to Asia, under, underdeveloped, not necessarily right. a, as pleasant an experience, certainly as Waikiki. And people saw, you know, the western boundary is just of Kauai, right? That right. was the end of it. And I mean, and, and I think that that has a huge, that is very important to understand that. We were remote, right. and yet we were civilized. We were, you know, technologically, you know, capable, but we were still very quaint. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> and we had romance. You know, I, and, and I think it, it infected more than the tourist industry, more than the taxi drivers, more than um, you know the hotel the hotel staff, because in those days everybody felt we were at an outpost. Right. This was an outpost. I remember a, a relative of mine was sick on the mainland, and I had to get back there, you know, uh, compassionate, what you call it. And um, it's very interesting. So I was in the service. So I called uh, Barbara's Point, and they had a Space A, a seat available. I mean, it was Space A is hardly the word. They had right, a, right, a right. plane with a lot right. of seats in it, right. and anybody. If you were military, could, you could get on. Yeah, right. military, yeah. you just get yeah. on, and right. you know, you sit in one of those sling seats. Right. That's what you do. So I called him, and I said, Larry, I need to get back to the mainland. And, um, you know, when, when, is, when is your flight leaving? He said, oh, we're leaving in 20 minutes. Well, I'm here, and you're in Barbara's Point. In those days, you had a cross red <laughs> wow, hill. yeah, yeah, It was yeah, a right, two-lane, well, yeah. you know, wow, half-dirt yeah. road. It took forever to get out there, like an hour and a yeah. half to get out there. And I said, well, I, I can never make it. I can never make it in 20 minutes. And he said, the guy who was running this yeah. in Barbara's Point, he said, no problem. We will wait. <laughs> <laughs> And okay. they waited. They held right. this plane for me. Now, I think that was part of the same thing that, that, was, that you saw in the mm. tourist industry. We were an outpost. We worked together, everybody working together. I mean, it was the kind of aloha that people aspire to now, but we really had it. And it was everywhere in the, in the state. I mean, people were friendly to strangers in well, those but, days. But you have to remember, though, uh, at that time, the population of Oahu was barely 200 or 300,000, <laughs> uh, barely less than half. So you come to a uh, city, actually the city ended at, like at like Lua or Red Hill. I mean, the rest was like terra it was incognito. Plantation plantations, there. a little bit in Waihawa, a little bit in uh, Nanakuli. Plantation Kuli. towns. Yeah, there, there was like, mills, yeah, sugar mills. I, I mean, it was like, uh, uh, it was, you left town. You left and you went to something. Uh, Haula was way out there. Same thing on the Kaiser side. Yeah. You know, there was a dirt road right. out there. It was a two-lane road, Kalani Aneoli. It was, it was an adventure. <laughs> Nothing was going on. But, uh, but you mentioned the military. And the other th uh, uh, thing that really sparked interest in Hawaii was r and from Vietnam. People in Vietnam spoke of, I want to get back to the world, 
which meant the U.S., and Hawaii was part of the U.S. So they met their families here, a state in Waikiki. That would also be a catalyst to return from Ohio or, sure. or Nevada they, or they Texas. They bonded up with That's right. rest and recuperation. Yeah, R&R &R was, uh, was a great program where uh, they saw that, wow, we have to come back. We have to bring the kids back. And they would come back annually, and, and that was sure. also a feeder to uh, the uh, to tourism, middle yeah, to tourism, the, the yeah. 70s and 80s and so forth. That still continued. But, uh, but, the, uh, but the iconic uh, waves of sugarcane and so forth, it's gone. <laughs> Ag is gone in well, Hawaii. concrete jungle. <laughs> that, all those things that were in uh, Blue Hawaii, it looks like a historical anachronism now. It know? is an anachronism, and, but people you know, still come here for this, this imaginary romance. It's so interesting. And um, you know, I, I, when we get back from this break, Ray, okay. I want to talk about what happened with Aloha and, um, well, with Pan Am for one thing, <laughs> right. and then uh, Aloha and Hawaiian. I want to talk about how you know we wound up with only one airline monopoly, and we lost uh, all other met methods of transport, and what that did for the state. I want to talk about private uh, general aviation too, and uh, take a look at air transportation in Hawaii in all ways. Um, after statehood. Uh, and that, if you didn't notice, uh, that's Ray Tsuchiyama. He's an informed citizen here on Think Tech, Life After Statehood. And we're talking about air transportation in Hawaii, which is a worthy subject. We will never finish it in this time, but we'll give you 15 minutes more after this break. Thanks. to the game and it's gonna be great early arriving for a little tailgate i usually drink but won't be drinking today because i'm the designated driver and that's okay it's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line keeps him from drinking too much so we can have a great time a little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day i'm the guy you want to be i'm the guy saving money i'm the guy with the h2o and i'm the guy that says let's go Live, we're doing life after statehood with Ray Tsuchiyama, informed citizen. We're talking about air transportation in Hawaii today after statehood. And it's very interesting. Uh, Aloha and Hawaiian grew up after that. Uh, and uh, we, we have a caller. Oh. We have a caller and a caller. Uh, thank you for calling. What, what is your question? We are so curious about whether we provoked a question on that. Air transportation. Do we have a vision for the future like we did in days gone by? A vision for the future of air transportation? Okay, let's play that. Do we have a vision, Ray, for air transportation in Hawaii? I mean, before, as you mentioned, it was central in the development of the state in and after statehood, right around that time. And it, and it defined us. It defined our future. Do we have a vision now, or are we, you know, the prisoner of Zenda? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but uh, he, well, let's look at how airlines look at Hawaii. Remember, uh, with all this tourist traffic, uh, do airlines make money? Remember, there's a lot of seats sold on mileage. There's not much business travel coming to Hawaii. Yeah. They're not making that much money, yeah. although there's volume. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, if you're in Hawaii or in Logan and want to go to an Asian capital, it's tough. It's a challenge sometimes getting to Hong Kong, getting to Taipei, getting to Manila, getting to uh, Ho Chi Minh City. You have to go through a hub like Incheon or Tokyo or some others. And we are not a hub. We're not a hub. So um, it, 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 when people talk about Asia Pacific business, well, it has to be easy to get to places like Singapore. It's easy to get to anywhere because it's a hub, uh, or, or, uh, or Narita, or Haneda, or Incheon in Korea. And so, uh, and remember this overflow. 
flights. Remember all that time into the 70s and 80s, the 747 did not have to refuel. They just went on from uh, Silicon Valley to Tokyo or Beijing or Shanghai. It was more efficient. They're it's going to every, every, every day. There, there was nothing drawing them yes, here. Yes, so every day there's a huge amount of volume, business travel. They're paying dot top dollar for those seats. Yeah. They're making money. Uh, yeah. Airlines are making money. And so, um, and, and there are other airlines that emerged uh, outside in the Asia Pacific, like Emirates, uh, and like uh, Singapore Airlines, or uh, Asiana, or even, you know, JAL or uh, NA, that go everywhere now. They're, it's not restricted to Asia Pacific. They go to Europe, to Brazil. Even small to, airlines yeah. can become large. Look right. at Hawaiian Airlines flying or, everywhere yeah, now. Yeah, or Tiger Airlines, uh, uh, a discount out of Kuala Lumpur. So there are strategies there, um, and, uh, but Remember, Hawaiian Airlines uh, had to cut back on certain um, destinations like Manila. It, there weren't enough business travelers paying top dollar for seats. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a hard one. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, um, if, if there's a vision, yes, there's a lot of mass tourism traffic. How do you create a network where there are business people coming to Hawaii and Hawaii people going out and selling things and doing business in Asia Pacific? Well, we don't do business. We do tourism. It's another kind of business. <laughs> okay. The right. people, you know, I mean, although I have to footnote that by saying right. that we went to this uh, program at the convention center. In fact, we, we filmed it a few weeks ago. Um, it was called the uh, Elele program. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's about uh, bringing uh, scientific conferences to Hawaii, oh, right. you know, by the tens of thousands. It's a new kind of market. Okay. The hotels are very excited about it. Obviously, the university is very excited right. about it. I wouldn't call it business per se. We call right. it professional, scientific, academic. But there's a lot of bread in that, right. and you know we could find another another footing, if you right. will. Right. And, and I and I thought the that. convention center would be doing that by now. Yeah. And, and you know that, that's not a uh, that's not a new topic. But Schmeiser was talking about that uh, as uh, Hawaii's Ge Geneva yeah. of the Pacific. Yeah. That's 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We never realized that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's too bad because there were you know little little pockets of uh, possibility. You know, talk about mediation center here right. and arbitration and trying to draw people to you know the Aloha environment and we're very friendly and you can find a nice hotel and do your arbitration and mediation make it a law center of the Pacific right. none no. of those things well, well, well but you had a very good point in the uh, first part of the show remember there was a dream a vision of Hawaii as a romantic uh, you know uh, vacation land and if I was a middle manager in uh, working for a fortune you know 250 company in Beijing Shanghai whatever and said to my boss I want to take this course you know in mediation or uh, marketing and and the, and the guy says, wow, that's great. Where is it? It's in Waikiki. No way. <laughs> well, you remember the U.S. government had a, had a conference out here. It was GSA or something. And they you know, were going to have a huge number of people come out here. And somebody put the kibosh on it. They said, you can't go to Waikiki. That's not a serious right. place for a conference. This is a serious conference. You don't do serious conferences. And we got to change that. Right. Um, and, and, you know, that's another show, another time, talking about HTA and uh, you know, the um, Waikiki uh, Improvement Association and H, the Hawaii visitors and so forth. But, but here about airlines, you know, the airlines might have, they might have participated in shaping this. Instead, I mean, I'm not saying Hawaiian alone, instead they were interested in the tourist trips. Right, of course. Okay, yeah. and, that, and that's why I think uh, there wasn't enough business for both Aloha and Hawaiian. Right. It's not enough seats. So one of them had to go off, and Aloha did. That was too bad, because a lot of people liked Aloha. Oh, yeah. And they remembered during the war, right. there was discrimination on Hawaiian. Remember that? And my father-in-law wouldn't fly Hawaiian. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah he wouldn't fly Hawaiian. Uh, well, I, only, I, I know my uncle and aunt always flew Aloha from Maui to Honolulu. Yeah. I, I don't know the reason, but, and they said there was better service and they, the drinks were uh, better quality or whatever, but uh, that was in the mid-60s. Mid <laughs> so they must have had some kind of, you know, uh, but, but, but you look back then, there was enormous traffic uh, among the islands, even back in the mid to late 60s. So, uh, and today, of course, like we discussed before, the, the price of seats and so forth are so high that many children on the neighbor islands have never been to Honolulu or vice versa. Yeah, so high. So what you have is the ferry, sorry. The, <laughs> you know, the boats, the ships that yeah. used to ply these waters, sorry. Uh, really tragic. There is no commercial way to get from island to island on the ocean. And there was no, well, there's island there, but I, you know, that's a small operation compared to the, you know, Aloha United. So what you have is a survivor, Hawaiian, and they get 250 or $300 for a round trip, and those kids can't afford it, and their parents can't afford it. 
and the average person, the average citizen of this state cannot afford it. And if he can, he can't afford it to do it on a regular basis. No, no. The way you know, when we're talking about airlines, air transportation, why? When I first got here, uh, the, the the weekend uh, for a lot of people, a lot of young local people was take a, one of those mats, oh, you know, yeah, straw yeah, mats. Right, right. I remember that. And, yeah. and some Zoris right. and an igloo full right. of beer, even beer right. on the airplane, right? <laughs> and, and go to the neighbor islands, right. and then it costs like 25 bucks or 30 bucks round <laughs> trip. Right. And that was, you know, right. take your honey to the neighbor islands. Right. And it was fabulous. It was, the state was a playground. The state right. was unified. And in, a, in an island state, the, the possibility of air travel and the quality and the price of air travel defines the way the state operates, comes mm. together, especially when there's no surface travel possible. You know? So, I mean, in those days, it was pretty good. And something happened afterward. I don't know. You would expect by now, uh, you know, from years past, uh, as uh, like other places, there would be, you know, many Uber-like air taxis. <laughs> you know, think about it. And and they would be, um, you know, in, you know, categories for bu business and so forth, or, and, and much more. But um, it, because remember, there's uh, ups and downs in, in gasoline prices, gas oil prices that affected air travel also, and tickets went up. And uh, there's been, um, you know, a kind of a uh, up and down um, uh, history to all this. But you're correct that um, there are many people uh, who don't see their loved ones or family or friends for a long periods of time. Uh, the, and it was different. Even my, my father used to go from Maui to Oahu when he was a manager of a baseball team all the time. And they, they figured out ad hoc ways on ferries uh, that some left from Kanihoe, you know, others left from uh, the docks and from Lahaina or Kahului. There were all kinds of almost uh, clandestine ways of getting back and forth. <laughs> and they figured it out, and I could never you know, understand it, but they used to have much, hundreds of ways of doing it. But it's all gone now, you know, all gone. Yeah, it's too bad. So we have one airline, and an island there, I suppose. Um, and you can go rent a, a plane with general aviation, but that, relatively speaking, that's way oh, more right. expensive that is than it used to people. be. Yeah. I was telling you during the break that a buddy of mine said to me one day, this is back in the 60s, let's have a Coke on Molokai. <laughs> so we got a plane, he yeah. rented a plane, we drove to Molokai, we had a Coke, we drove back. Um, it was a different attitude, yeah. a different possibility. Now you would not be able you to know, do that. Uh, even in the uh, 70s, uh, there were people that I knew who would go to Kapalua just to have dinner. And come back, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and um, you you can't even fathom that anymore. In order to go to a neighborhood, you have to really plan out, uh, you know, what you're going to do and do and and uh, seek the you best be prices. Tourist. That's right, uh, you know, and stay there for a long time. Uh, well, uh, more than one night. Yeah. You're going to yeah, be yeah. there for a week or so. And I remember, you know, we, we, we can't we can't finish the show without talking about the airport <laughs> okay. or the airports, right? <laughs> okay. And I just came back from a, a conference in Las Vegas. The airport is beautiful. Right. But then, if you fly to Asia, the airports oh, are yeah, all yeah. beautiful. Right. And if you fly to Europe, the airports are beautiful right. too. You know? So you know, we don't we don't do that. We've been waiting to upgrade our airport since 2001 or two. We haven't done it yet. And it's really, it's, it's failing. It's failing and, and it's obvious. Uh, and, you know, I mean, my, you, you, you know, even merchants who could make money right. aren't in there for right. some strange reason. Right. And then you add on top of that the whole thing with TSA. Right. You know, I remember, Ray, I would take my, my, my now my wife, my, my, my girlfriend out. And we would go to the restaurant right. in the airport. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The restaurant was very good. Everybody yeah, yeah. had a great coffee. Everywhere there. Went yeah, to yeah. This right, restaurant. right, right. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, in Singapore, they have a hotel, they have a pool, they have a cinema, they have a movie theater, and a great mall. And the other places, Skip All, they even have a little casino at the airport. And, uh, you know, they can take money from you know, other places. Uh, and also an uh, art museum. Uh, you know, like Rembrandt yeah, yeah, at the in airport, San like Francisco, Rembrandt. Yeah, the yeah. same thing, the walkway uh, there. Right, that's know? right. And you can uh, have a wedding at the airport. And so it <laughs> becomes... People love that, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's and not they a, head off to their honeymoon, That's right. right. <laughs> it's not a place to escape. It's a place, a meeting place to go to, like you say, a restaurant where you meet friends. It's and, a city. Yeah, and, and yeah, a little... Uh, you don't see it as, as a transportation. You look at it as a mall. <laughs> you look at it as a place to meet and have a good mm -hmm. time. I want to go back to uh, the caller. The caller oh, asked yeah. us what, it, what the vision was. Wow. Right? Yeah. So if, if you could take a moment and uh, articulate a vision, um, I make you governor or something. <laughs> uh, what vision would you have for air transportation 
in Hawaii going forward now? Well, I think air travel has to uh, benefit uh, not only the tourist industry, it has to benefit emerging uh, kinds of uh, businesses that in the Asia Pacific Rim. And, uh, but how to really make transportation a part of business development? You, you see what I mean? How can uh, people in the airline industry or airlines lead business to where there's opportunities? Yeah, and they yeah. have to see us as a business, a small business market, not an international global business market. We just want to do business on Maui or Molokai or the Big Island. We need to get there. We can't spend $300 every time. And we can't do all the business on the telephone or by the internet. We have to do face to face. We have to, they should be providing us with a method of facilitating business in the state. So the state, again, as I mentioned before, should come together. Because if the state comes together and does business together, Trust me, our economy will be better. And, yeah. you're, and, and you're referring to, you know, because of transportation, we seem to be uh, 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 moving apart. You know, and each island seems to be very resentful or kind of, we, I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, have my taxes pay for something else. Or, you know, we have to prevent people from Oahu coming and, and spoiling our beaches. There's something strange about it that. It really is. Because the kingdom was about a unified place. And we were all Hawaii uh, since that time. Now we are divided and going off to other places. And, um, you know, a house divided you know, <laughs> must fall. It's not, it's, it's, it's not going to be put together. And the force of, uh, like you said, aloha. Aloha was for all the islands. It was for uh, welcoming visitors from everywhere to the entire state. Yes. And, and, and if we're going to, you know, uh, invite people, but yet uh, entertain them in different ways, or we have a different feeling of our visitors, it's going to wreck the future. Yeah. So the airlines have a big effect on us. And That's our right. future. That's right. And they're part of the vision for the future of the state of Hawaii. Next time, Ray, let's talk about the middleman. Let's okay. talk about the wholesaler. The emergence of the wholesaler in the 19th century, um, the guy who imported goods into Hawaii and sold them locally, and then the demise of the wholesaler uh, in, the, I guess, the, the late 20th century and certainly now. That's Ray Tuchiam. He's an informed citizen. Okay. And we talk about uh, life after statehood, and we find... We find things that we didn't have any idea about <laughs> when we start the program. It's totally serendipitous. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Aloha.